Hello everyone and welcome to another Blood Bowl replay analysis video. I'm Andy Davo and this is some Blood Bowl 2 action. Uh, this game is an interesting one I think because I am looking at a game that I played a couple of weeks ago. Um, something that happens to everyone an awful lot I suppose. Uh, we're playing uphill team value and we're also playing into a team that is a lot stronger than us. So you know, the, the common uh, dual problem of having to play high strength and probably behind skills so you don't have a loaded guard to, to back it up. Um, so I'm just going to put earn skills on for a second to try and emphasize this point. Um, I'm rolling with uh, a guard. Uh, we're also, from the last game, you'll remember a chorf blocker died, so I've picked up a guard um, mercenary, and that's it. <laughs> I've got two guards, um, and I have got a dirty player. Now, inducements-wise, we've picked up a bribe, a, a mercenary blocker, uh, and an uh, induced dirty player which gives me 13 players uh, and we're playing into 12 players uh, on our opponent's side if we quickly look through the team he's got an agility four skink which is an absolute nightmare uh, we've got a block uh, sorry we haven't got a block we've got a guard stand firm and we've got a, a, a hitter there um i think straight out of the gate here the first question that i think i want to decide uh, and reflect on the inducements package have we picked the right inducements package to go for this? Or or have I got it wrong? Um, I've certainly got the line of scrimmage wrong if I don't change it. Um, I think I think this matchup is very, very, very difficult if you don't get rid of a couple of Sauruses. Um, so the idea behind the inducements package is to take Dirty Player, kill a couple of Sauruses, or at least you get rid of them, and then you can even, even up the matchup. But on reflection, that's quite swingy, right? Because uh, you're going to get caught on your bribes one time in three if you're breaking armor all the time. Because you're going to roll a double on the armor or on the injury. That's going to be a one in six. Uh, sorry, a one in three. Because <clears throat> um, it's one in six on either. It's one in three. Um, and you're going to cause a removal uh, if you can break armor, if you can bring the, um, the dirty player onto the injury. You know, middly 40 percentages. So you're a bit ahead. But both of those things could come up at the same time, or we could get one of them or the other. Um, so you can be miles behind, or you can be quite a long way ahead. It's quite swingy. And I think on reflection, in a matchup where you're already behind, do you want to be adding swing to go even further behind? Because if you go further behind, there's no way you win this. So I'm, I'm just sort of pondering and reflecting on, maybe Dirty Player at this point was a bad idea. Because sure, if it works, yeah, okay, fine, I'll play my way out of trouble. But if it doesn't work... I'm, I'm absolutely ruined. It's like all eggs, one basket, and I'm toast. And I, I think, I think on reflection, I think that's a bad idea. Um, I think a wizard here would be stronger um, because although it is still a same sort of comp similar concept of all eggs, one basket, um, what you then got is that they've got to play around that all of the time. So we get a very sunny kickoff event, um, uh, and notice here that I've actually got to mess this up. Um, so let's just, I'm just going to pause it. I'm going to bring up paint uh, as I'm one to do at the moment. Uh, and we're going to have a quick look at why this is such a problem. So we've thrown the two dice block there. That's great because we've got a guard here uh, and we've got an extra assist there. But now look, that's not two dice because this guy here that threw the first block doesn't have guard. And that's not two dice. So this was dead easy to fix. All I had to do was set up properly. Um, and I had to just swap that guy put that guy in there and then put that guy all the way around so effectively you've moved the guards one along the line and replaced it because because this guy does not need to have guard <clears throat> so i've got to mess this up and that's more annoying and i i sort of remember a little bit about how i was feeling here um what do we want to do we want to go and isolate this guy and we want to blitz him and we want to cause some damage so i've now got to play around this problem that i've caused myself um, and I don't know what's caused it, but I can see it. I, yeah, I saw it straight out the gate. We can see here that this is going to be a problem. So now you've got to throw a straightforward block, which is rubbish. We get the push, which is awful. Um, we don't get the follow-on hit. And that's our own fault, really. You know, person to blame? Me. And now we've got this. This little problem. It would be ideal, of course, to punch um, with block rather than without. Um, but never mind. 
and, and now we're obliged to make a sure feet go for it. And also, really, if you if you were your opponent, um, you, know, you, you want to be picking on the ball centaurs where possible with a mighty blow. That's dead easy, right? Dead easy. So I'm, I'm forced into what is effectively a suboptimal foul. But it's only plus, only plus three. No, it worked. Great. We got a removal. Um, and I probably at the time didn't even notice that we made a bit of a mess, mess up of that. <clears throat> you don't need to re-roll that because the skinks are so far away. And then I'm just looking at this now. And you can see where I've stopped. If I click the skink and it, if the game will catch up with itself for a second. It's being awkward. Um, yeah, there's, there's a gap. The skink can get to this square here and then there. So there are some things to like about that turn. There are also a lot of things to not like about that turn. Uh, and our opponent does what I think is absolutely the right play, which is slam Allosaurus into me. To one, it controls and limits my movement, and two, it really, really, oh dear, um, it really stops me able to, to pick things and, and just batter them. And I think what we're going to see now uh, is a bunch of skinks trying to flood in through, because all my chorfs are tied up. <clears throat> um, very unlucky I think I say very unlucky unfortunate to have lost the guard because now how am I going to unblock my way out of this I think it's worth looking at this and saying right well what would you do yeah what would you do in this situation how would you fix this problem and I think the first thing I'm looking at is I'm trying to work out where all my two dice blocks are um, in terms of thinking about the mechanics of the turn and then and I'm also thinking about currently how safe's my ball so the ball has got a six square radius it can move in one two three four five six so you know we can get along here um, which is a little bit further away than you might want so if we can stand there we might be able to create a t-shape um, and we can get three dice on this gink one two three smack that seems quite exciting just start the gate right now three dice on a skink um, it stops two dice um, happening to us he hasn't got block so if he's two dicing me without block he's looking for an 11% play before throwing a reroll at it so long as we can stop the saurus he's getting at us and maybe maybe we could stand the saurus there that, sorry this this guy here um, but then we notice this guy and he's got wrestle now he has got block so he's looking for a 4-5 or a 6 on a 4-5 or a 6 25% strip ball if he makes the 25% without the reroll, it's 40% with, then he's got an edge force skink that buggers off with the ball, we lose the game. So I think looking at this in reflection right now, it's probably throw this two dice, see what happens. If you roll a power, great. If it doesn't work, you've got to blitz it, and the ball carrier needs to run over to this area here. So let's see what we actually do. So we bring the ball forward straight away, which makes a lot of sense because if we lose the ball, uh, sorry, if, if this whiffs, we don't want to lose the ball down here. Much rather do it further forward. Okay. So that, there's... I don't know if that's an... I don't know if that's a mistake, actually. Because by rolling rolling that dice straight out of the gate, you are throwing it a block. And it's probably the right play. It's not the greedy play. It's the right play. Reason, is it reasonable to throw one dice with block? And the follow-up there is quite nice. Now we are getting a little bit lucky because we rolled two powers on one dice. Um, and then the guard here really just sort of locked down this space a bit more. Um, and I, I feel as though now, looking at this, I'm already saying to my opponent, hey, you feel free to just batter all these players and we're going to have to try and you know, deal with it. So I'm, I'm slightly surprised our opponent's backing off. So they go for the block. If he hadn't followed there, he had two dice. Um, then again, he, I suppose he's going to throw the two dice here. Blitz is the centre. Mighty Blow not working on that occasion. And now he's looking to move this guy. You've got to let that go, I think, with two re-rolls. And this is, I think, the first choice. This is the first proper decision moment I've got to make in the match. Um, which is, 
Um, well, if we go for the value, go to value town on this, uh, which we can, you know, we, we can go and live in value town. Um, we can probably get a good, pretty good foul on this guy, maybe get ahead. Um, or we can try and foul the skink off, which is easier to get rid of, but has less value. So we're going to choose which, which target we're we going for, the Saurus or the skink. Um, the Saurus is the nice juicy target. The skink is the easy to get rid of target. Um, and as we're a player ahead, getting rid of another player would be really, really beneficial here. So I think looking at this now, I'm, I'm thinking about this guy. The, the argument for going for the Saurus is that you can put the ball in. You can put the ball in there. You can put this, um, uh, the other goblin in there. Throw the two dice and then follow. And then you can get one, two, three. You've got three, all three assists here. Plus one, four. Um, and you get a plus four foul on this guy. The problem is, what happens if you don't break armor? You're going to look rather foolish uh, if you don't break armor. Rather foolish indeed. <laughs> Probably sure I didn't actually know that was going to happen. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's a big problem. Because it meant we had to eat that. I, that's why I think the, sk the skink was the better play. Uh, we rolled a three plus the four would be the seven with the... Uh, with the um, uh, with the dirty player that would be an eight, we got through, uh, and then we were actually oddly enough probably then got him. Um, so he's got one dice, which I think you take. And he chooses to not re-roll it, but gets paid. Bit harsh, but makes it. I'm now down the I'm now down the leader, so we've got to re-roll it because we're so far behind. Um, so I choose to re-roll that there. <clears throat> Right, next thing. We've got to really, really now, I think, want to break this giant down and to look at um, not what I might like to do, but what I've got to do here. Because my life, you know, life choices, my game choices have brought us to the point where we are now looking at this. Yeah, we're playing with a dirty player and a bribe. Um, how can I try and get some value out of this? How can I fix this? We're on turn four. I don't need to charge forward this turn, but if I don't start moving and trundling down the field at some point soon, we're going to be in trouble. We haven't blown the bribe. Um, so really, I think straight out the gate, you need to block here. Then we can probably block here. And by blocking here, he's probably going to sidestep there, which means we can go one, two, three, smack, um, which is quite nice. Again, we've managed to get one of the, uh, the, the Vault Centaurs in the early games completely isolated in some place completely nowhere near the ball and how the hell am i going to defend the ball against this because i've got nothing to pin it with um and i've got nothing to do to do anything to it so um I'm, I'm probably looking at something like a two dice block there hoping for the pal um and then going one, one two three four pin that's got to be the play so we get the tackle was offered the surf there, chose to not take it. Don't think you can follow that up. Promptly Devo follows it up. Now this is a big... See, yeah, I, I definitely, looking at this now... Look, that's your problem player. Deal with it. I freed up this chorf. What, what does this chorf do for me? Not a lot other than take an extra hit. But this is where I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come unstuck. Because where do you put the ball now? Like, literally, where do you put the ball? Yeah, that that was the gate. That was the route. That, I think, was something that's going to... Gonna, it's going to cost me, that is. We're absolutely going to gonna find that really hard work. We could have pinned this. Sure, we'd have given away a, a mighty blow hit, but... He's going to mighty blow hit me anyway. And then the ball gets to stay up here near the short blockers, which means we are here. So greed. Greed is bad.
This is going to be really difficult to get out of. He doesn't want to expose the skink. So, turn five. We now know we must get forwards. Um, well, the blitz is going to be one, two, three, four. Four to there, five, six. It's a double go for it. That's unpleasant. So that's got to stand up. This block has got to come across here. Um, he's going to just have to stand up. Um, and what on earth are we going to do here? What on earth are we going to do here? Like, yeah, this the, the, the poor choice. That one poor choice on turn four. That's really bad. One, two, three, four. Oh no. Oh no. That was not the choice. It was not the choice of the same person. just gonna I mean the look on my face of shock and horror I think might have given away that I wasn't entirely happy with that turn um but let, let's look at this just for look right two dice uphill why is it two dice uphill because he hasn't going to be able to go and fetch any assists sorry he can't fetch any assists right okay <clears throat> uh two plus with dodge two plus with a team reroll two plus with a team reroll all the way through um throw a two dice block here roll a pow Three plus, two dice sack, score. Like, I've left him 55% um, for a really positive outcome. This guy's just stood up. So 55% pal, um, and, and then I've left him at two plus, two plus for 1D on the ball, which just on its own, two plus, two plus for 1D on the ball is pretty, pretty bloody strong. Um, I think you throw that block and see what happens. And... If it if it works, you you one nil down. Oh, muffle, thank you very much. Rescued. And that that's a bizarre block, right? That's a bizarre block for two reasons. One, um, it it, it makes this dodge worse. And yeah, I don't get that. And the goal is the ball. I don't get that block. Okay. Um, just a little point of order, and I suppose I suppose you can argue um, that it was a go for it. But if this guy had been one further forward, it just makes it a bit more difficult for me to get at him. And this isn't too difficult to get out of, right? Two dice there, blitz the skink, and then dirty player it. So blitz the skink. And you're absolutely following this up because wherever it goes, you want to stand on it. Stand on its face. Um, not giving away complete hope of scoring. However, not reflecting on the turn timer at all. Um, that's bad. Breaks armor, causes a KO. Okay. So now if I'm going to have any chance of scoring, I've got to be able to... Um, get a ball centaur out. Slightly surprising that side step. I think I'd have gone there. <coughs> I think the opponent got quite lucky with that. Yeah, he's been unlucky just a moment ago, but I think he got quite lucky with that. Not being a break on, and not being a, a power or anything. Um, but I, I should have responded to this now and said, well, we're in big trouble. We're not going to score out here um, because he's just going to swamp me. Um, he does find the power. And I, and I think I think we're not going to score. only thing that can save me now is these two not coming back. So we need to get this to 0-0 zero, zero at the half. Um, and if I can get it to 0-0 zero, zero at the half, then I stand a reasonable chance of being able to um, turn him over. Possible chance, because he'd be playing with less than 10. 
So we've got a blitz here, I think. Blitz here and run down south. No follow. And going for this is fine. Um, yeah, that's okay. And I, something I, I reflect on um, at the at the time. I remember playing this game and being. I, I remember the emotion of being a little bit disappointed that I was playing uphill lizard men, several hundred TV, when this team wasn't prepared for it. And I think on reflection now, it's not that it's. Um, a bad matchup. It's that I think that the that the DP bribe combo, when I can't reliably knock them over, and I'm going to be scrambling very early on in the drive and very consistently, it it doesn't really work. And I'm curious to see if that plays out over some of the other games later in the series, because that's that's what I'm seeing here. It, yeah, I'm not consistently able to knock someone over. This is just bad. Uh, that was a bad block. I understand why I threw it because um, it'll be too easy to get two dice on the ball and blah, blah, blah. Um, But I think if you're going to throw a block, um, that's not the one to be throwing. Um, I was quite surprised at that. Um, why why scatter that? Because you can clear that scatter with it with relative ease. Why? If if good rule, if you can scatter, if you can clear the scatter without needing to scatter, don't don't add. Yeah, you know, do not insert random variants into a game that you don't need to insert variants into. Um, it didn't matter. He went and banged it in anyway. I don't think that's unreasonable. I think on reflection, um, we both lost two players, um, and the dirty player bribe combo. We were scrambling very early on. Didn't get close. What woke up? One out of two. So now I've got to try and work out how we're going to try and defend this when you're already 1-0 down. Um, and I think we're just going to take a moment to talk about setups. I think that when you're 1-0 down, you should put your yeah, put yourself in your opponent's shoes and think, how would if I was my opponent, how would I close this game out? And yeah, if we're the lizard men here, and we just think about it this from this side. The lizard men are almost certain to win the game and very, very likely to get at least a draw if they can smash in another one fairly quickly. So, what does that look like? Well, for me, that's probably a sideline cage or a sideline attack. So, if I boat here and I just completely hand them either sideline, they should stick some sauruses on one side or the other, take the, yeah, take the sideline, cage, score, and you can relatively reasonably, you know, reasonably reliably put the ball on this skink and have a load of edge three skinks at the front here and just go left or right. Um, so my setup needs to be pretty, pretty wide uh, to try and counter that. So I'm hoping what I go for here is the non-boat setup. The, the problem I've got is that if we go wide, we're going to have to expose centaurs. And he's got this guy. Oh dear, I'm not going to go wide, am I? No. Yeah, I think I think you have to expose the centaurs. Hmm. Okay. So he's picked up another re-roll. Ball's gone, gone deep for us. Probably not the greatest kickoff. And in fact, looking at this, he's not setting up to shove a sideline at all, which is interesting and surprising. So we'll just flip this around and watch it from our point of view again. Now, if all the chorfs survive, we might be able to start putting a little bit of pressure on. But they all do need to broadly survive. It 
get why you wouldn't pick that up. But okay. Strange, strange concept to not have gone for the ball there, because I don't think with chores. Oh dear. Um, I don't think with chores you can uh, put pressure on. In fact, I don't. I, I, I literally don't think I can at all. Um, we've got to wait for the ball to come towards us a bit. Um, something I do do like to think about is you know, trying to exploit opponents' weaknesses. Um, they've clearly made a mistake here for me. I've also made a mistake because I've not thought this through. Uh, unless, of course, we're blitzing on a go for it, which doesn't sound like a great idea. Um, <clears throat> what we should be trying to do is block this Saurus into this gap and then foul it in the head. Um, I'm not sure about the go for it. I think we'd be better off with the ball centaur. That's a go for it. Now, point of order, if of course I follow here, I can then fill in that square there, and then both of those players can be assists. If I don't follow, this guy is going to be going in this square here, and then this guy is not an assist. And if I don't break armor because of that, or if I have to use dirty player on the injury because of that, I'll be sad. So, um, point of order, always try and uh, do something sensible. As the ball's a million, million miles away, Absolutely doesn't matter, and you may as well throw everyone in into the assist. Um, and if that would have been a casualty, if we'd rolled it the other way around, but never mind. Not fun of giving away the block there. Because he's going to roll forward into us anyway. <coughs> Smart play by opponent, get extra hit. Yeah, like that. Well played. I reckon our opponent must have changed his mind at some point during this one because um, he didn't go and pick the ball when it absolutely could have done the edge force game beforehand. So it's, something's changed in his head um, and the play style, yeah, play style is, altered, is absolutely altered. So I think you open here with the with the foul, and then everyone else can move off. Yep. Now that is nice. Finally, we got rid of another one. Um, and if I'm careful where we blitz, right, the guard can go in here. I'm going for the skink. Block guys. Um, while we're moving all these people around, where do you think the ball's going to go next turn? If you were the lizard coach, where would you take it? Would it be over here? <laughs> it would. Oh, right. Okay. So I'm, I'm glad that the last two players have gone this way, but this flat line here is a real problem for us because, um, thank God that was a pal. Uh, because if it wasn't. He can pin all these players, run past us, and then he only needs to be in, you know, easily in scoring range, and we're, we're toast. And even now, um, you can blitz here, pin the centaur, and all three of these can go and be in scoring range. Uh, I think I think there was m mistakes there from from me, um, which were not necessarily crushed by my opponent. And he's he's played a pretty solid game so far, so. Um, interesting to see people make conscious other choices. T shaping me. Where's this going? Oh. Okay. Interesting. So he's choosing to just sit there. Um, I think if we keep sitting there, if we can keep fouling and just killing stuff, um, 
yeah, he's going to run out of players at some point, and we're both going to put a bit of pressure on. I, yeah, we're not winning this game, um, but we might put a bit of pressure on. And here I'm very worried, very worried about the ball being brought forward. Uh, I think possibly, possibly even I was considering here that the, the Croxy Gore is able to get rid of the dirty player and then he just goes and stacks the, um, uh, the Crocs on my uh, strength four and then I can't get out. Um, and I think I'm probably actually overly panicking here. South was a much much stronger square there, but never mind. Yeah, the Crocs rolls in. Now all these guys are pinned. Look how much space there is there because all my players are over here. We'll follow that. Yep. And he absolutely. I I think he should absolutely be taking away taking away my right flank. Um, you need to pin this, or at least or at least um, range it where you put people in the way. And then you can make it so you can get past me and stay out of range. But, yeah, shock, he's brought the ball over here. <clears throat> now, this is worth worth a moment for a sec. Yeah, worth, worth looking at. I know I've just activated the Blitz here, but um, with two re-rolls in turn, in turn 12, and lots of players... You could argue that we should take the two dice that's on the ball. It's a little bit of it's a, it's a bit of aggressive two dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, but it is there. You have to open with a one dice, um, and it has to be a knockdown. <laughs> so it's not great. Um, but if you make it, um, you can go and run this this chorf in there. That's two two more dice. That, that then can go there, that's two more dice, and then you're in. Now, is that the right play? I don't know. Um, we've still got this guy to bring forward. You could argue it's just bring Blitz here, uh, and then carry on. Oh, excuse me, I'm really sorry. I have a very, 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 very tiring weekend. Uh, this is being recorded on a Tuesday, and I've been at Tabletop Tournament playing my second ever Corn uh, Demons um, Tabletop, uh, and they did very well. Very well. So we do find the pal. We can get the block there. And I think we just need to double stack this. Not standing and basing, just double stacking. And make, switch, force him to switch back in again. And the bride has been spotted. So at this stage we've got no threat on the ball, but we are doing all right. I'm not, I'm not too worried. Opponent says, "Okay, peace out. We're not going to try and win this game two 0 We're just going to hold on to our one 0 win, um, which makes it a real shame that we were only we were one 0 down because if we'd have managed to hold at zero zero, this behaviour doesn't happen. Um, so something to try, it's something for me to take away, and maybe maybe you guys take away as well, um, is that you think the drive's ruined. Fight Newton, Newton Tail for." Um, a uh, a zero zero on your drive. It really is that important. <clears throat> right, interesting turn. Oh, that's what I was wrong with it. Pause. So it's, it's not worth sending anything forward, I don't think. If you're going to send anything forward, it's going to be a centaur. Um, that's, that's asking for trouble. Yeah, I think I think the blocker here could have just been better served by being involved in all of this. 
Now that was quite a lucky pal because that on not only huh, wow, that's a super lucky pal. So it's a removal, and it lets me get this guy off the edge. Um, he throws the apothecary out, which I think is entirely reasonable. Um, and I think this guy possibly could have been one to wear off the off there. So now the ball is absolutely going to be coming this way, I think, because this side for him has collapsed and um, he's not going to want to go anywhere near here. Which is why I think, yeah, does this blocker do anything? Not really. He'd be much better off being further south um, and, and trying to put pressure on. And imagine this guy is just free to wander around and roam, roam the streets and do whatever he wants. He's played this well. He's played this very well. Now, choices. We can blitz here, and we can put this guy here. We can put a bit of um, ta a bit of tackle zone action on there, and then we can bring the ball centaur back. I think that's probably the right play. Um, that means standing this guy up. Um, and I also think it's nice bringing that chalk blocker over, just to put a bit of threat on the uh, on the side here. That goes in there. One, two, three, four. I think you've got to tag this out, and then you can bring this guy in. One, two, three, four. He needs to go tag this guy as well. To disincentivize a 1D or something else. Unpleasant. Um, uh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, he should have just stood there. Should have just stood there. Because now that, that guy can move around. Wow, that's... That tells you that he had he had a very exciting plan, probably to loop everything around the top and bring everything back together again. Um, my opponent is absolutely not afraid to just take the one zero here, um, and I think that's what we're going to see. I think I think he will um, do that because he's taking the two dice here, and and if he takes my centaur down, yeah, that's going to be the end of the game. I think I'm not going to be able to score. So um, made a couple of poor life choices there. I think. That's nice. Don't care about that because losing 1-0 and 2-0 is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Um, but I can't rescore. So he's, he's done a really good job uh, of shutting me down. We're on to turn 15. And I think overall it's been a, a, a bit of a challenging game. Um, with, with, with some mistakes in I think. Should he just let that go? Because that Saurus can move and he could go and get done over here now. Side screen. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Side screen. Game over. Blitz this. Yeah. Well played. Yeah, I've been out, out thought there, out foxed. Out foxed. I mean, I think, I think you could do, a, yeah, you could have done that a bit better. Two plus dodge with dodge, I think was, was the play way forward. So, there we go. Right, now, as always, if you enjoy the content, please leave a like and subscribe. It massively helps the channel. Um, and I would, would ask that if anyone is uh, enjoying this series um, over maybe anything else, then please um, let me know in the comment section below. <clears throat> and, and if I've missed something, uh, or you'd like to see a different race covered uh, in this uh, in the future, please let me know. And uh, I'll see if I can pick that up for you. Um, let's go to the end of the game and we'll see what the stats are. Uh, it doesn't appear any blockers have died so far. 
We might play a game with no blockers by the day. So we have got a chance at scoring. It's Bull Centaur to pick ball up, throw it to Goblin, score. But it is very sunny, so it's a six. Sadly, Bull Centaurs are not good at pulling, throwing. Never mind. Right, so a quick look at this. Uh, the, the, the only stat that I think really actually is, is something that you, is worth looking at, uh, and that's the block succeeded. Uh, that doesn't mean actually succeeded it really should say blocks thrown because um, i don't care what the block dice were i care how many blocks we threw so we managed to throw 51 blocks into the lizards and we received 41 in exchange which <clears throat> in a high strength matchup if that was neutral that'd be pretty good so i'm actually quite pleased that we managed to get so many blocks in overall um once you start then getting fixated on this um you're into the realms of stats being um or you know maths cl clouding your judgment we did all right. We did all right from a block dice perspective. Um, and then, yeah, I don't care about the armor breaks either because that can get modified by fouls. It can be modified by being lucky. But block succeeded can't be modified by luck. So worth looking at that uh, and paying some attention to it. Uh, now, as always, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.